So I will read, uh, we'll, we'll call the uh, meeting to order and I'll read the standard opening statement. This is the Northampton Conservation Commission for the 10th of February, 2022. Uh, the, uh, and, uh, by the way, the agenda says 2021, but uh, 2022. Uh, the Commission is a group of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of Northampton. We are concerned with the eight interests defined in the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. Our duties also include open space acquisition and management. We operate in a way that's consistent with open meeting law requirements. All meeting dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance, and we invite public comment during our meetings. However, we ask the public to limit their comments to issues that are within our purview. Today's agenda includes three hearings, uh, a notice of intent for drilling and boring monitoring for well installation, uh, this uh, uh, Smith Street and Randolph Place um, here in Northampton, uh, along the former uh, uh, Mill River uh, uh, route, uh, and then a request for determination of applicability to determine if demolition of existing structures and lot clearing uh, will alter resource areas, this on Landy Avenue, and then a request for determination of applicability to determine if walking path, boardwalk installation within the buffer zone to bank and wetlands will alter resource areas, this at the Rocky Hill Greenway. Uh, to begin, we had three sets of minutes to review and approve. Uh, uh, take the first um, uh, which was the 19th of August. Um, Sarah sent out three sets. Uh, the commissioners have had a chance to review them. Um, uh, someone want to make a motion to approve that first set of minutes for August 19th? So moved. Um, second. Second. Okay, made and seconded. Any modifications or amendments? If not, all in favor? Uh, Sarah, roll call. Randy? Yes. Kevin? Did you say my name? Yes, Kevin. Okay, so yes. Uh, Jen? Yes. And Alec? You're Alec muted. Mute, muted. Sorry about that. Um, I wasn't present to that meeting, so I have to abstain. All right. Can we, is, is three enough, uh, Sarah, for? Approval of um, minutes? No, so we'll have, we'll have to, to revisit those. Table those until another meeting. Okay. I wasn't that uh, eat at any of the three. Okay, ah. so we we so will table we'll, these until revisit until minutes. Next for, okay. Apologies. Uh, so the first uh, we, there was a notice on the screen of the meeting is being recorded, uh, and I'll ask if there are any general public comments not having to do with any of the specific cases that we're going to look at tonight. If not, we'll move to the first case, a notice of intent for drilling of borings and monitoring well installation, uh, the riverfront area, which is the former Mill River route, uh, budget, uh, bordering vegetated wetland and buffer zone, uh, this Smith Street and Randolph Place. I don't know here who's going to present on this, but uh, please I, proceed. Uh, yep, uh, I will start things off. Uh, do you all mind if I share my screen? Sure enough, Sarah can permit that. Yeah, you should be all set. All right, share screen. Can you see that? Yep. Okay, excellent. Uh, first off, thank you all for your time tonight. Uh, my name is David Leone. I'm a licensed site professional with GZA Geo Environmental. Uh, I'm here to talk about this uh, NOI application filed by Eversource Gas of Massachusetts or EGMA uh, for the assessment of the Mill River Channel. Uh, I'll give a little background on the reason for our work. Uh, my colleague, Kim DeGudis, uh, will then take over and talk about the resource areas. Um, so this work is related to the assessment of the former manufactured gas plant that operated near Crafts Avenue uh, to the west of this area uh, from the 1850s until 1951. Uh, assessment and remediation of residual contamination that was associated uh, with that plant was initiated by Columbia Gas of Massachusetts. 
Um, in addition to the uh, upland area to the west, uh, the affected area includes portions of the former Mill River Channel, uh, which has since been filled, and a portion of the, um, of the Mill River itself. Uh, prior studies at several area properties have shown that there's a thin uh, discontinuous layer of dense non-aqueous phase liquid or denapple uh, in the form of separate phase coal tar uh, that's present at a depth of about 20 feet below ground on a clay layer that underlies much of this area. In July of 2018, uh, sheens and odors were observed along a limited portion of the Mill River Channel. Uh, that issue was reported to the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection uh, and Columbia Gas conducted several response actions, ultimately resulting in the placement of a reactive core mat along a portion of the riverbank in February of 2020. Uh, that reactive core mat has been effective at um, preventing significant sheens on the surface water since. EGMA purchased the assets of Columbia Gas uh, in October 2020 and his continued assessment activities related to the source of the sheens as well as the extent of denapple associated with the former manufactured gas plant. Uh, the work's being done in accordance with the Massachusetts Contingency Plan or MCP. Um, much of the affected area has reached uh, a permanent solution under the MCP. Uh, the remainder has a temporary solution. Uh, EGMA has hired GZA to conduct the assessment work uh, and I'm the licensed site professional of record who's overseeing that assessment. So the intent of the work that we've put in front of you uh, is to close some data gaps with respect to the extent of Dean Apple beneath the area in question, uh, both to better define the disposal site under the MCP and to assess uh, if Dean Apple may be acting as a source of sheens uh, that have been observed in the river. Um, the results of our assessment would be used to determine what additional response actions might be necessary to mitigate those sheens. Uh, we plan to install six borings on the portion of 23 Randolph Place that's located to the, um, to the southwest of the Mill River. Uh, locations will be based on access, uh, but our intended locations are shown here. Uh, there are six orange uh, boring locations. Access to 23 Randolph Place will be across 32 Smith Street and to Randolph Place. However, other than potential limited clearing for access. Uh, no work will take place on those two properties. Uh, we'll utilize a small track or a truck mounted drill rig. Um, work should only take a day or two. Borings will be completed down to the clay layer at approximately 20 feet. If separate phase product is encountered, um, a groundwater monitoring well would be installed at that boring for future sampling. Uh, each well would be finished with a locking standpipe for security. Uh, any excess materials that are generated during our work will be removed from the resource area on the same day of the work. Uh, and then moving forward, the wells would be periodically gauged uh, and would eventually be decommissioned and removed when they're no longer needed. Uh, so in short, this project is related to assessment under the Massachusetts Contingency Plan. Uh, it's of limited duration and it should have minimal impact. Uh, so with that, I will pass things off to Kim. Thank you, Mr. Leone. Uh, my name is Kimberly Dugutis. I'm a professional wetland scientist. Uh, just going to give you the, the quick hits on how this project relates to the Wetlands Protection Act um, and expand a little bit on what Dave was talking about. Um, in front of you, you have the proposed improvement plan. That's what we typically call it. Uh, the yellow dotted line is our proposed route of access. Um, we say proposed because if there's going to be obstructions in the way of the machinery getting to those drill sites, things like trees, um, we wanna give the, the drill rig uh, the ability to negotiate around those trees so there's no tree cutting and there's limited um, temporary disturbance to the wetland and to the riverfront area, okay? Uh, in terms of the wetlands, what you can see on this plan is that green shaded area is the wetlands as a GZA wetland scientist had delineated back in July of 2021. Uh, the blue encompasses the Mill River, so that's the bank. The aquamarine green line is the 50 foot protected buffer zone. The uh, green line to the left of that one with the dots in it, that's the 100 foot buffer zone. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then the blue line is the riverfront area. So just so we can see what the regulatory boundaries are on the plan. Mm -hmm. um, for purposes of being overly conservative, uh, because as you can see, uh, and as Dave had mentioned, the orange dots are the approximate locations of the sample locations. 
one of those sample locations it appears to be right on the boundary of the BBW and buffer zones. So we just included it in BBW just in case. So that would mean a total approximate permanent impact of 20 square feet. Uh, as part of this application, we are requesting a de minimis exemption for replication requirements. We are also requesting a variance to the 50 foot uh, protected zone um, from the bylaw just so that we can get access to uh, the area and also for the installation of that one potential monitoring well that's located out, outside of the BBW. Um, as, as we said, the, the access routes going to be uh, temporary disturbance uh, and the only permanent disturbance are going to be the well locations. Does anybody have any questions? Questions from commissioners? Because my question is uh, timing. Uh, uh, the, there was reference to uh, frozen or dry circumstances. Uh, what, what are you thinking about? Uh, if possible, we'd like to get this done um, in late winter. Um, you know, it's it's again, it's it's real short duration. Um, you know, there's generally good uh, drill rig availability if we're booking that far out. So, um, this this as soon as we can get this done, um, you know, the sooner we can get this done, the better. Okay. Uh, other questions from commissioners? Yeah, I'm just curious how wide the drill rig is. Uh, it depends on the rig we use, um, but we're talking six to eight feet. Okay. For purposes of calculation of uh, temporary impacts, we said we estimated about eight feet. Again, just to be overly conservative. <laughs> okay, thank you. Of course, thank you. Any other questions from commissioners? If not, can we, oh, before I ask for a motion to close the hearing, any comments or uh, questions from uh, members of the public? If not, can I get a motion to close the hearing? Sure, so moved. And a second? Second. All in favor, Sarah? Randy? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Jen? Yes. And Alec? Yes. Uh, looks um, well thought out um, and necessary and um, uh, relatively easy to permit. Sarah, you had um, conditions once we're assured, as they said, that they're going to do it during um, frozen conditions, uh, that uh, if they uh, are going to have to remove uh, trees or uh, do any removal and replacement that that plan would be submitted before work would begin and that we'd authorize uh, staff Sarah to um, approve that before the work would actually go forward so that would be an additional condition um, were there any other conditions Sarah you were suggesting I don't think so um and the, the applicant had indicated that they were re requesting a variance from the wetlands ordinance, which isn't actually something that Northampton is able to do, but that's not necessary in this case, since this is a limited project and work within right. the protected zone is permitted in accordance with that. All right, can uh, someone make a motion to uh, grant an order of conditions, standard conditions, plus that one additional um, condition? Sure, so moved. And a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Randy? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Jen? Yes. And Alan? <coughs> yes. All right, good luck. Thank you. Uh, and again, thank you for your time. Thank sure. you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, next case is a request for determination of applicability to determine if demolition of existing structures and lot clearing within the buffer zone will alter resource areas this on Landy Avenue. Um, who's here to make a presentation for that? Hello, everyone. This is Ryan Nelson from R. Levesque Associates, representing the uh, applicant New Way Homes. 
May I be allowed to share my screen, please? Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. So the subject property as stated is 39 Landy Ave, this property here. Currently there's an existing house on the property with a garage and some outbuilding accessory structures. There's a wetland located offsite to the west, a bordering vegetated wetland located here. Here are the flags and the delineated boundary. That wetland boundary was delineated in March of last year. Um, and existing conditions has been uh, surveyed for the subject site and the applicant is requesting to demolish the existing structures on site and also clean up the brush and clear the vegetation on the property. Uh, the site is fairly flat. There's about one foot of elevation change that varies across the property. And along the limit of work, erosion control barriers are proposed to keep any soil migration from entering neighboring properties or entering the street. So you see this line here, that is the 100 foot wetland buffer. So this portion of work will be in the buffer zone. And then the westward of that line would be outside the buffer zone. Um, aside from that, there's not much more to it. Happy to answer any questions you might have. Questions from commissioners? Um, sure, J just to confirm, I mean, it's a straight demolition. There, there are currently no plans for what might go on that site, right? Because that'll have That's to come back for approval. That's correct. Any future work would be notice of intent. Right now, it's just an RDA for the demo and tree okay. yep. and, and are you going to be running uh, silt barriers along the back of the lot? Uh, yes. So the whole site, all four sides will be encompassed by erosion control barriers. And was, as I recall, see, there was a, the type of, Sarah, you had a concern about the type of uh, uh, erosion control or silt, silt tents? Yes, uh, fiber oh, instead roll. of fiber roll. Yes, yeah, right, okay. state fiber roll was shown as the erosion control uh, around the entire limit of work at the rear of the site, closest to the wetlands. I was just suggesting that that be substituted with you know, a full silt fence barrier. We're, we're agreeable to that. That's not a problem. Other questions from commissioners? If not, any comments or questions from members of the public? Uh, yes, hi, my name is Reese Epic. I'm a neighbor. I'm, I just, I didn't catch where the 100 foot buffer zone is uh, on the... Can you see the screen? Yep. Okay, you can see the... Uh, oh, cursor. so that's, okay. So basically three quarters of the property are within a wetland zone. Well, within a buffer zone. Oh, excuse me, the buffer zone. Okay. And what is that material you're going to use to prevent erosion? The silt fence. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Silt fence? Silt fence. It's a standard okay. um, staked um, uh, 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 one of the people who's more technically knowledgeable about this, can, what the material actually is, but it's a uh, um, Sure, it's it's a, an upright fabric that allows water to right. pass through. And it retains the sediment within the work zone. I see. And so that's removed after the work is done? Correct. Yes. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? If not, um, this is... Uh, we don't need to close the hearing because this is a an RDA. Is that correct? Right. Okay. So, uh, look for a motion from commissioners to let's see what the the um, trend, usually the checkbox three. Uh, uh, the motion would be to. Um, issue a negative determination checkbox three with standard conditions um, and a revised site plan with narrowed limit of work and associated erosion control must be submitted for approval prior to the beginning of work. And then that will include the silt fence rather than the fiber roll. And Kevin, staff was suggesting that stumping and grubbing the site would result in a lot of 
uh, sediment mobilization and that that not be included in the negative determination if it's amenable to the commission. I'm sorry, Sarah, um, my computer was cutting out a little bit at the last That's part. Okay. My, my good headphones broke. I'm waiting for my new ones to be delivered. Um, so staff was suggesting that the, the clearing and grubbing of the site of all vegetation as proposed could potentially result in a, an, an alteration to the wetland due to sediment transport when weather changes, especially in absence of an approved development proposal. Um, so that the commission might want to consider removing that from the, the determination. Yeah, I was going to ask that um, the separating sort of the clearing from the demolition to me makes a lot of sense because I don't see the if it's just demolition and there's no approved plan. Um, I don't see the justification for clearing the vegetation because of the risk to the wetland. Um, May I speak to that? Sure, please. Um, just from a, a practicality and logistics standpoint, if if the machinery, you know, there's mobilization costs, if we have an excavator and the equipment there to demo the house, it makes sense to clear the lot then rather than come back again in the future. Um, and that was the whole point of the, the erosion control barriers. If, if we were just doing the demo, that wouldn't be necessary. And the site is fairly flat. There's less than a foot of grade change across it. So um, with a properly installed silt fence, I, I would argue that soil migrating, leaving the site would not, would not be a likely occurrence. What's the timing that you're imagining doing the Kevin, you're cutting out a bit. I oh, think okay, I heard sorry. a little bit of that. I, I, I was wondering what the timing was. Um, um, the, the demo would probably be um, as soon as the permitting process allows. Uh, and as far as stumping and grubbing, it would be after the ground thaws. How, how is the ground going to be left after stumping and grubbing? Uh, it would be regraded and then seeded. So your, your typical dry okay. or stabilization cover. What, what do you think, Sarah, about uh, including I mean, they're going to have to come back when there's another plan uh, of what they're going to actually do uh, after the uh, demolition and um, clearing of the area. But um, my, my own sense was that if, if it, and I don't see topo lines, but I'm imagining if it, it's a, a virtually flat area um, with care, and that would make sure, you know, I'm not going to do this work uh, when it's uh, going to be heavy rains or anything that um, with the proper silt fence that it should all be contained inside the boundaries. And that, that's a pretty substantial area to have destabilized all at once in, in absence of some sort of planting plan for when work is complete. And I'm not sure that I would be comfortable recommending a okay. determination for all of that. So the, 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 um, Missing piece would be uh, a, a specific stabilization plan. Is that fair to say? Are the trees to the north going to be removed? Oh, hey, Mason. Hi. They appear to be along the property line. That's why I was wondering how much of the trees to the north. Um, actually, there's some along the, appears to be along the boundary line to the south also. Yes, yeah, so uh, around the house area, there's really not much for trees. There's just some small brush that's grown up just from the property being vacant. But the real trees, uh, there's one here, I forget the type, and then there's a row of pines along the border. Um, and then there's just various invasives and brush in between. But really, the only significant trees are there, this one and then the pines along the northern border. Uh, I'm just saying you better be careful with the pines along the north because it could also be property line trees. I, I'm not sure how much of them are on, on the property to be cleared. 
Yep, mm -hmm. we, uh, we've done a boundary survey. Smith Associates has done a property boundary survey and uh, we've located the trees and we're very well aware of where the boundary is and that will all be staked out for the contractors prior to them starting. Okay. There is a, this is Abdul Hanif. There's a beautiful apple tree, magnolia tree on the site itself. So is that, is that possible to be preserved or is that gonna be taken down? Um, I don't have a, I, money. I would have to ask the applicant on retaining that specific tree, but when you, when you made oh. that statement, when you made that statement that there's no trees on the property, except the boundary line, that was incorrect statement. Uh, I'm, I don't believe so, sir. I mentioned no, there was you, you need to, you need to believe that Excuse you need me. to have somebody come sir, back and take a look again. Is, sir, you have a, uh, an opportunity to make a comment, but you can't interrogate the applicant. No, I'm not interrogating him, but I'm letting him know because the statement that he made that there is no significant trees on the property is incorrect. So they need to correct that statement. There are a lot of pear and apple Thank trees you for your on, your comment. The, on that property. I live down the road from it. And there's a lot of pears and apple trees. Yeah. If you're going to tear them down, at least give the Smith location a chance to go in there and take those trees. They could use them. They can get a bucket loader in there and pick them up. Uh, please, if uh, people who are not speaking can be muted. We're getting a lot of interference. Um, now, uh, uh, Sarah, you have done a, a site visit. I have not. Um, and uh, your, sent, your concern, as I understand it, is that to clear all this um, at one time, even though it's relatively flat and even with the silt fence perimeter, um, you're concerned that it still is uh, uh, going to be risking a uh, uh, transportation of, of um, sediment into the wetland? Correct. So what's proposed isn't just vegetation clearing, it was clearing and grubbing, and grubbing involves soil disturbance as well. I'm sorry, what is grubbing? So it, grubbing is when the, the roots of vegetation that are being removed are taken out as well. Sarah, your, your uh, mic is making a little, at least on my, uh, my computer, making your voice a little muffled. So uh, grubbing is, you started to say. Uh, so when a site is grubbed, the, the roots are pulled out and removed as well. So that would involve soil disturbance. Um, may, I ask, may I ask a question? Please, uh, so say live, your name, please. Uh, my name is Celeste Palladino. Um, I live at 29 Landy Ave, so the abutting property. Um, and I guess my concern about when the Norway spruces are removed is A, would I be notified because, you know, there's, I feel like there's some risk of it falling on my house or I would just like to know. Um, and then the potential impact, you know, these root structures go into my yard. So the impact on my the foundation of my house, or will people be coming into my yard? So just will the what will the communication um, look like when this is going to happen? And then uh, what recourse do I have to see whether this how this might impact the foundation of my home when those trees are removed? Um, that seems a uh, a legitimate concern. I um, Sarah, as the person who's done the site visit. Uh, do you have a sense of the distances involved and uh, whether there's um, going to be a clear, I, I, I understand the applicant has stated that they've done a, um, a boundary survey and, and they know where the boundary is, but that's on the surface and not below the surface. Uh, is there that kind of risk that the uh, neighbor is uh, concerned about? Yeah, I mean, depending on the size of the root ball of each of those trees, um, Again, as I noted, it's it's not just cutting of the trees. Rubbing was also indicated. Right, so I, right, right. That, that would indicate that those root structures would be removed, but um, you know, the, the applicant didn't go into that, that sort of detail. I can Norway's, add. This is Joe Maribel. I live up the street from her, and those Norway spruces are about 100 years old. I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of roots going under her, her property, abutting her foundation of her house. 
So that helps me understand, Sarah, your concern about that it's not just cutting, but the grubbing is going to be producing uh, much more substantial soil disturbance than if it were just demolition and, and uh, cutting of, of uh, trees. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I add to that? Please. Um, would the commission entertain that trees above a certain diameter be ground, the stumps be grinded rather than removed with an excavator? That way there's no disturbance to, uh, or less disturbance to the neighboring property. Um, and it will... That was going to be my suggestion. Um. <clears throat> Yes, uh, our, uh, just to, to clarify that our purview is um, really not so much about uh, legal boundaries, but uh, about the impact to the jurisdictional area, the wetlands and buffer zones. Um, nonetheless, it seems um, realistic that uh, if the uh, roots are not torn up, um, then that will mean less soil disturbance um, and therefore less transportation of sediment, which is within our purview. Um, so that, uh, uh, that seems preferable from a jurisdictional standpoint that uh, um, we have fewer concerns if you're not um, digging up substantial root balls. I would agree and we would be amenable to some sort of condition that would state trees are to be cut flush to grade and ground in place. Um, this is Recepic again, but if you if you just cut the trees, then don't what happens? Isn't that stuff all gonna like degrade and you know disappear anyway? And then don't you have the same problem as if you did your grubbing thing? Um, so typical grubbing activities, so an excavator, you would rip out the root ball and depending on the, the species and the size, sometimes it requires excavating up to around the drip line of the tree, depending to get all the roots out, um, just because of all that lateral surface area. But with grinding, we'd really only be grinding a small diameter around the actual stump itself. So there'd be a lot less soil disturbance. And the... Uh, uh there would be eventually a, a, a rotting, a composting of uh, the um, biological, the, the roots, the materials back into the, um, back into the soil. Right, and if it's going, oh, sorry, go ahead. I just think it alleviates the concern of um, loosening the soil by pulling up yeah. the roots. Um, and, but it still doesn't answer the question of having a, sort of plan, planting, um, just something to hold. If we're taking a, away a lot of vegetation close to a wetland, sort of what is the planting plan to hold that sediment in the interim of not knowing what's happening next year? Right, my earlier comment was not having a, a, a specific uh, stabilization plan uh, seemed to be a missing piece, but um, uh, perhaps if, if uh, let me propose that if, if in fact um, the, uh, at least any substantial trees, and I don't know um, quite what the uh, trunk diameter would be to count as substantial, but um, all along that northern edge were um, not uh, excavated, but uh, cut flush and ground. Uh, and that before work begins, um, uh, staff approves a stabilization plan, which the applicant would have to present. Um, then will that take care of uh, uh, commission of Jen, for instance, your concern? Yes, okay. Can I pop in here with something? I raised my hand, but that doesn't seem to be. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, we, once, once the, you're sharing screen, not everybody shows up. So please okay. go ahead. Just state right, your name. Or my hand. My name is Diane Scott. I live at 44 Landy Avenue, the property that is um, almost across, well, directly across the street from the property, not so much from the house. Um, I just want to reiterate something that Abdul said, and that is there are significant trees that are on the property that are not the Norway spruces. There's um, a huge uh, shrub of um, arborvitas. There's a 
fully mature 50 year old um, magnolia tree and 50, 60 year old uh, rhododendrons that encircle the house. The, these people use and apple trees. There are several apple trees, apple trees that were on the property. The previous owners before they died and got sick and stuff um, grew. That's what they did with that land. They grew um, fruit trees. They had fruit bushes. They have a beautiful wisteria vine in the back, but there is significant greenery on that property. And so um, I just, I just really want to reiterate that that's a lot of roots. That's a lot of roots. And so any work that's being done to just cut flesh and excavate and even do the small amount, even when they go to dig the holes for the foundations, there's going to be a huge um, disturbance to the ground. So I just want to state that if somebody's not, if somebody on the committee isn't, isn't familiar with the property, perhaps it's a good idea to come down because it's not just greenery that's grown up since the house has been vacant, it, you know, little one inch things. These are full grown, full size trees that are on this property. So I just want to put in my two cents there that I'm concerned about the damage to the wetland. Um, and the, just in general, the respect for the property. And I the understand. Our, our, our purview is uh, uh, protecting the jurisdictional area um, not the aesthetics or the historic use or um, um, whether in fact the privately owned trees can or should be cut down. That's not our um, role to determine. Oh. Unless there's can, gonna can be some say, disturbance uh, uh, to the jurisdictional areas for which we do have responsibility. So, right, uh, I'm, I'm just uh, saying it's not insignificant greenery there. It's, it's fully mature greenery that was there for many, many years, not just things that have grown up from an abandoned lot. I just wanted to make that point, that's all. I understand. And I have, a, I have a question, please. Yes, state um, your name, please. Yes, my name is Joyce Rosenfeld. I live at 15 Warner in mm -hmm. Bay State. And I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, as a novice, um, because we don't know the future plans for this site, what the future plan might affect the wetlands in thinking of all of this. They would, the applicant before any future plans were approved and that before they could do any work would have to come back before the commission to address any of the activity that is within the jurisdictional area. Right, but so already damage would. That's why there's. But already things are being done. So it seems true. to me that, that the, it seems to me that there's a flaw there and a separation that is artificial. But that's just my opinion. I, uh, I understand that opinion, uh, that opinion. And uh, in fact, there's a determination of applicability as opposed to a notice of intent to do a project. And we're at, and that is a, a legally determined separation. Um, I understand. And we're exercising our judgment about the first of those, about hey, a private owner has a right to uh, do this kind of thing with their land. Um, I understand. I'm and just our purview has to that work. Of I know. I, I I understand clearing, that. I'm just um, always um, having I'm just always um, interested. And my inclination, as I said before. I'm just always interested in presenting the bigger picture. Right, and our, our purview is more limited. Um, my, my earlier uh, suggestion um, uh, in response to uh, um, Commissioner um, Jen Smith's concerns was if, we, uh, if it's gonna be cut flush and ground and a stabilization plan has to be presented to uh, uh, staff before work begins, um, uh, I think the, at least, and we've added the provision of the more rigorous uh, silt fence surrounding, uh, at least from my perspective, uh, the concerns that are within the purview of the commission um, are addressed. Um, I don't know if that is the opinion of the rest of the commissioners. I 
Uh, we're not all in the room. Sometimes when we are, we can see body language and facial expressions and nodding and so forth. And I can't see any of that right now, but um, I think this discussion has been helpful to um, understand more of what's going on. Um, and there will be another bite of the apple before the applicant can do anything with this once the uh, current proposed work um, is completed. Um, Sarah, I wanted to go back to you and ask, um, uh, are you comfortable um, having to make a judgment about that stabilization plan that I suggested? Um, and based on your um, site visit, uh, is it realistic that uh, um, uh, without major excavation of root balls and so forth, so it's cut to ground level and, and, um, uh, and then just ground uh, rather than excavated? Um, does that take care of your concerns about the relatively sizable area that would be disturbed just by this demolition and clearing? Yeah, I mean, excavation of the root balls was in the soil mobilization that would come with that was my primary concern. Um, and a stabilization plan would allow the, the commission by a staff to also see what's happening with the foundation holes just to make sure that there aren't any issues there. Excuse me, uh, I uh, I just have one technical concern. Uh, can I can I speak? say your name, please? Yes, uh, my name is Seema. I live in Northampton, but I live in Monroe Street. But just because I have a technical background, little bit of technical background, so I just I mean everything is discussed, and even we 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 want to have the stabilization plan in place. Just one technical point is like when we are not doing the grubbing of the roots and we are just uh, cutting and crushing the stems. Over the period, roots would die eventually, and then it creates the capillary action through which water can infiltrate, and it adds to the uh, instability of the landscape. So I, I just wanted to point out this one thing, like the stabilization plan should include this concern also. And it also depends on underlying geology, like how, how that water infiltrates. Particularly, it will, it will create the hollow spaces along the roots when roots are dying. And because it's so much of vegetation, so it will be a lot. So just one technical point I thought that I should add, which the applicant should also consider. So it is going to be a long-term stabilization plan. Well, this thing happens not just within a couple of years. It may take five years or 10 years. Thank you for your comments. Yes. May I ask a clarifying question? Yes, your name, please. Celeste Palladino, 29 Landy Ave. Um, so whose purview would it be the Conservation Commission or the Building Commission um, to investigate my concerns about how the removal of those Norway spruces might or may not impact my the foundation of my home? Or is this something an arborist could kind of weigh in on and what the potential immediate long-term impacts of it? Because again, the root structures go really far into my yard. Um, so. Hmm. Well, um, I don't have a clear answer to, uh, I mean, it's not, again, it's not our purview uh, because we're dealing with the jurisdictional area. Um, uh, Sarah, do you have a suggestion of uh, where uh, uh, Ms. Palladino might turn to, to have her concerns addressed? I... Hmm. You're muted, Sarah. About that, uh, an arborist would be able to give some guidance as to the size of the, the root ball structure for those trees, but I don't know if they would be comfortable extending that to implications for your foundation. So, so that would be something that I would have to seek out. Okay, not the property. No. Okay, thank you. Yeah, like I say, our 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 job is to figure out what the impact's going to be on uh, wetland jurisdictional areas uh, in buffer zones. Um, thank you. So, um, any other public comments? Uh, this is Joe Maribel again from 14 Landy Avenue. And, mm -hmm. um, I'm the one who mentioned about the fact that the apples and pear trees and a few other trees. I know the deer is like to eat off of them right now, but uh, I hate to see those trees be torn down and destroyed. And I don't think the root structures are that big that they couldn't be picked up like I set up a bucket loader and moved to Smith Vocational School, let them take the trees. A lot of wildlife up there that would love to eat off of them too. 
again, not within our purview, uh, an interesting suggestion. Um, but but we, also make we, a strong suggestion to the owner. You may not be able to enforce uh, it, but you can make a strong suggestion to them. No, we, we that would be beyond our purview. Uh, but it's not talking about impact on jurisdictional areas at that point. The other thing to consider is I know they marked off the gas line by the street. And some of those trees are close to the road. And my concern is that gas line, the natural gas line. Um, uh, Sarah, the, the uh, I don't know if DPW would have to um, weigh in on work that is uh, within utility uh, rights of way or impact the utility rights of way. Uh, so if any trees within the road right of way are proposed to be removed, that would need a public shade tree hearing. Um, the gas anything line. On, anything on the property under... itself, the applicant would be responsible for obtaining that. Um, Dig safe and trench permit. Yeah, it's under the grass portion, it's not under the tar. The, the right of way ex extends beyond yeah. just the paved way. Kevin, can I ask a clarifying question? Sure, Jen, go ahead. We're not closing the hearing, is that correct? So this is our well, main commissioner discussion. Right, this is uh, uh, still in, in, in open hearing because with an RDA, um, we, don't. we don't. So I guess I would, it would be helpful to me to understand from those, everybody who's been on the commission for longer than me, kind of what our precedent is in terms of thinking about clearing as it impacts wetlands. Um, yeah, like if this wasn't a buildable lot, would we be thinking about this differently? Um, and what is our purview kind of when it comes to clearing versus um, grubbing? And um, that's, does that make sense? Well, it, uh, I think if, if this were on a steep slope uh, leading right. directly into a jurisdictional area that uh, then we'd have to um, consider whether in fact there might be it, yeah. is uh, sediment transport uh, preventable um, or would there have to be extraordinary efforts to prevent it um, mm -hmm. in a relatively flat area um, you know private landowners have the right to do a lot um, yeah. okay so. if That's however the way the wetlands act is written if something should go wrong after they're clearing and grubbing and it starts to get into the wetlands and we have jurisdiction over the whole site. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, well, we, we've got jurisdiction over most of the site anyways, but we could take it out of the front property line. Um, unfortunately, the way the Wetlands Act is written, it's, it's uh, if and when it impacts the wetlands area. So right. We're kind of stuck with that. Um, but, that's really helpful. Thank you both. By them um, giving us some kind of a, a good stabilization plan that the stuff isn't going to move into the wetlands, that's all we can hope for. We have no rights as to how they're going to take the house down or whether they can leave trees or not leave trees. It's private property. As, as long as it uh, doesn't impact the wetlands and they abide by our, our decision, that's, that's uh, basically what we have to deal with. So a, uh, um, um, if, if I try to summarize the, all of this discussion that um, we uh, would determine that um, um, yes, it, will have um, uh, the, the work that does take place in a jurisdictional area will not increase at this point until some future plan is presented to us uh, about what they're gonna do with this land. It uh, does not increase uh, uh, impervious surface. Uh, 
the if there's a stabilization plan that um, Sarah feels um, okay with prior to any work beginning, um, uh, and uh, that uh, that would include the uh, more rigorous uh, sediment control that we have. Um, then that's about as much as we do at this. Um, we have um, once they come back going to do, we'll have another uh, um, shot at determining, okay, what, is there anything that they're planning that could have impact on the jurisdictional areas? View of a stabilization plan is about as far as we can go. So with that, any other comments or questions? If not, then someone want to make a motion um, uh, the, the, uh, the negative determination, um, checking box three with the requirement that before any work begins, a, um, a stabilization plan be presented and approved. And the, the commission standard conditions as well. And the standard conditions as well, that's right. Someone want to make a motion to that effect? Can, can, you, can you go back to gallery view so we could see the people? Is that okay? Thank you so much. Sure. So we have a motion made and seconded. All in favor, Sarah, roll call. Mason? Yes. Randy? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Jen? Yes. And Alec? Yes. Very good. Um, thank you all. Um, our next case is a request for determination of applicability to determine if walking path boardwalk installation that's within the buffer zone and uh, wetlands will alter resource areas. This is at Rocky Hill Greenway. Is this Wayne that's going to talk to us? Great. That's me. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. There's only, I guess, one trick in this. Um, so we're doing work in, in a buffer zone and an area that's very wet, and we want to bring in 400 feet of dock. Um, so we've done this uh, years ago, so probably most of you weren't on the board. I think Kevin was at Ice Pond, um, just very nearby here. And, and we like this dock area because uh, sunlight can go through it. Um, and so you can keep a healthy plants below it. The one thing we're doing differently than Ice Pond, if you want to see a similar thing, is Ice Pond had a solid aluminum deck. For this area, we're going to use a plastic deck, and we like the plastic because it is perforated, I guess, for lack of a better term. So it lets water through the deck and, and some sunlight through. Oh, thank you. Sarah's picture's good. So the pictures on the, the top left is the clearest one of what we built at um, the other section of Rocky Pond, Rocky, so it's also the same conservation area, Rocky Hill Greenway, but the northerly unit ice pond. Um, so that one goes right through a wetland. It's, I'm making this up because I'm not really sure, but probably 15 or 20 years old. Um, we don't need to use preservative. We don't need to, the rivets popped out at one point, but we could fix that. That was a non-invasive thing to fix. So the difference is Sarah's picture she put on is further down, you see the matrix, which lets you know, water through it. Um, uh -huh. uh, and so it's existing trails, so we're not doing any new trail work. The only ground penetration will be these, these narrow aluminum tubes that go down into the ground. So they're helical anchors, little mud anchors that drive into the, into the ground, aluminum tube that goes up. If the trail, if the um, boardwalk shifts, if it sinks or, or goes up, we can just turn those anchors a little bit to raise or lower it so we can keep it level, um, make it ADA accessible. Is this, this is uh, part are these he helical, uh, uh, sort of like helical piles that can be adjusted by rotating? That's exactly right. I mean, okay. they have massive helical piles that big trucks install. These are little hand helical powers. So they're, I'm making this up, so don't quote me, but it's about a three inch diameter. Maybe it's a two inch diameter, I'm not quite sure. Um, so it just attaches the end of a, of a hollow aluminum tube so it can drive from there. So this, this 400 feet is the part that's jurisdictional. Um, beyond that, we are still planning, again, this existing trail, we're planning to do additional trail work and make that trail 
um, ADA compliant have an accessible trail, but that we're not working on now, we're just working on the docs. We have um, three different grants, one from CPA, that's for the overall accessibility, and that's the part that's later. We have two grants from the Commonwealth and they have deadlines. So we're doing the part, the expense, of, this is $110 a foot, so it's a lot of money, doing the part that using up the grant money now to meet our June 30th deadline, and then we have lots of time to think about the rest of it. And, and um, so it's winter time. We're not showing you specific wetland boundaries. Um, so whatever, the, Tara could tell you the number, but we're asking you to prove the work, and we know there's wetlands nearby without saying exactly where the wetlands lines are, and then maybe you agree to that in the future. But it's a de minimis impact because the only actual uh, displacement is the diameter of these uh, structures it, and, and because of the um, sunlight and air access through the deck that it really has um, virtually no impact on the underlying ground. That's exactly right. I mean, okay. Just for comparison, so we did something, I probably Mason was the only one on the Conservation Commission at the time, but 31 years ago, we built a boardwalk at Barrett Street Marsh. And I mean, boardwalk's very tired, but because it's a solid boardwalk, it definitely shades it. You don't get a lot of vegetation. We have a significant erosion problem below the boardwalk. We have none of that at ice, the ice pond site where we've had it for 20 some odd years. And the, this is somewhat of a unique site and then it, it used to be wetlands and we are hoping to help it become wetlands again, but none of the places that we're proposing to install the docks are currently wetlands. Uh, we hope that they will be in the future. So if you compare the map that I provided along with the request for determination, these are all in areas that are historic wetlands, according to them. Well, it'll have a net positive effect. I mean, you know, with, with more and more people visiting that site, the pathway gets wider and, you know, as people try to get around wet areas. So having having these uh, boardwalks in places have an absolute net positive impact. That's exactly right, Randy. I mean, you see it now, the, the, the spot we're putting, the biggest spot we're putting most of these, it keeps getting wider and wider already. Yep. Um, the, the other thing, so you know why we want to do this is these docks would be labor, but relatively easy to move. So we're working with uh, Department of Ecological, uh, Sarah, tell me what the ER uh, Department of Ecological Resources. Resources. Um, and we hope someday that they're willing to fund restoring the wetlands, in which case we might have to move the docks that suddenly becomes emergent wetlands. And we can do that without losing our investment. Good, good. Um, and so this is an RDA. Um, and so this, uh, yes, it was in a jurisdictional area, but will not, the famous phrase, remove dredge, fill, or alter. Um, and uh, looks like it'd be, as, as Randy said, a net net good, uh, net improvement. So um, someone want to make a, a motion to, um, approve the, the uh, or I, I guess the, is there a box to check check box three yes it's within a jurisdictional area uh, but will not remove dredge fill or alter someone want to make that motion so move and a second, second. Right. and any further discussion if not all in favor sarah roll call all right. mason yes randy yes Kevin? Yes. Jen? Yes. And Alan? Yes. All right. You know. Great. Thank you very much. I'll be I'll ordering the docs tomorrow. <laughs> Great. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> do we still uh, do we still have the uh, there was something like this in Mineral Hills at some point that I remember walking on? Uh, yes, we do. It's still there. It's not as continuous. So the other ones are on these piers. Yeah. It was more just the equivalent of wood pressure treated wood for a larger section. So there's I think three of them in that area. In our okay, all right. Haven't been in a while, but good. Thank you. Thanks. They, they hold up extremely well. That was one of the reasons for deciding to go this route. Well, and I have to imagine the aluminum plastic will be pretty much um, here for future uh, millennia uh, to discover. <laughs> so, um, all right. Thanks. Anything else for tonight? Actually, now that uh, Mason is here, we could take care of those sets of minutes. Oh, the minutes. Oh, those sets of minutes. That's, okay. that's right. So there were. Uh, 
three sets of minutes, one for the 19th of August, which looked okay to me. Uh, someone want to make a motion to approve those? I moved. And a second? Second. Any amendments, modifications? If not, all in favor? Mason? Yes. Randy? Yes. Kevin? Yes. And Jen? Yes. And Alec, I'll skip you since you indicated you were, right. yeah. abstaining. Um, next set was the 9th of September. Um, also looked okay to me. Someone want to make a motion to approve those? We, do okay. we have enough people present? Oh, who were there at the time? Kevin, Mason, Jason, and Jen. Jason's not on, is he? No. He's not, no. Yeah, so I'm thinking so, so. okay. I have to hold on that. And I think same with the second, with the 23rd. The 23rd? I okay. All okay. right. Well, we got well, one we done. Got, we got one done. All right. We'll revisit the other two next time. Anything else, Sarah? Any uh, permits we need to review and approve or uh, letters from uh, landowners or uh, update on how that enforcement order was going? Uh, yeah. So I, I do actually have an update on the enforcement. So I heard Happy. from that property owner um, and he's going to try and find a local consultant and get going on the, the work for the oh, next good. growing season, which good. is great. Good, glad to hear. All right, anything else for tonight? Not for me. If not, good to see everybody. Glad we finally yeah. rescued the meeting uh, uh, from the Zoom technical difficulty. Yeah, so I, have, I have no idea how that may have happened because I always take the, um, the Zoom link directly from my calendar and put it into the agenda. And I don't know how they could have gotten to be different at all. The, the mysteries of the digital universe. Um, Life happens, so, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, I missed all that. <laughs> right, no, you could, came in late, they said, so we, we had a, an adventurous beginning. Um, so, uh, but this goes back to on the 24th right now, we don't have a meeting unless something comes up between them. Yeah, I, I don't think we're gonna need to meet on the 24th, okay. but I'll, I'll let everybody know. If something late and um, pressing comes up. So the next meeting will be March 10th. Assuming we have uh, cases to review. March 10th. Okay. Very good. Thanks, everybody. Good to see you. Okay, great. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye. Bye bye. Take care. Bye now.